at the end of the day, everybody wants to right? It's a no. natural human emotion. Everybody has it. It's just in a way and a matter of how much you have it and like what you're having it with. Do you think that you have a right to Yeah. What makes you say that? Because it's my re reproductive right. It's it's It was given to me to do to have children. What's the purpose of to have children? Arguably, it has two purposes. A, create new human life, which I think our society has forgotten about. B, right. emotionally bond with the person that you're having with. That's mm -hmm. what your brain is designed to do. Every time that you have sexual intercourse, your brain releases oxytocin and it makes you feel emotionally bonded to that person, which is why hookup culture is so damaging because it's not transactional. It's not supposed to be transactional. Right. It's supposed to be bonding. I think that line of thinking is what's led to an extremely pro-abortion culture. I think that's what's led to an extremely pro-hookup culture. I think that's what's led to women being stuck in this zone and men being stuck in a zone of not being able to have a meaningful connection. You see, women were sold the dream of feminism in which they thought they'd be living the life of luxury, wealth, world, travel, luxury clothing, designer handbags, and heels, and countless men simping around all of them. They failed to realize that this dream came with an expiration date. And that expiration date started when they were close to hitting the wall. When they crossed the wall, the dream ended. It shattered into a thousand pieces, leaving them wondering why men didn't want to chase them anymore as these women kept on chasing corporate ladders and ignoring starting a family. At the end of the day, you can't beat nature. One thing I noticed too about just dealing with women in America too is just like they're so borderline domineering, trying to control everything when I'm with them. And I'm just like, yo, <laughs> like, are you trying to emasculate me? Like, are you aware of what you're doing? Like, do people, not. are people tolerate this? Like, I call them out and I'm like, I, I, maybe it's your first time. This is not working. Like, you need to know your place when you're talking to a guy like me. Do you me. think they don't know though? They have really they don't. lost touch? They even? have lost touch. Nature has its roles for men and women. The sooner women realize that the better their lives will be. Women are now realizing the dream of feminism wasn't a dream. It was a fantasy. I think women suffered from the delusion that men weren't doing anything strenuous and that they were given money just for showing up. They fought for the right to be given money just for showing up. Now they are stunned to find out that men were working during all that time they weren't at home. I don't feel so for a single one of them who said they were tricked into feminism. There is a breakdown, a fundamental breakdown right now that's happening in society. And some of that deals with the way a lot of these women, and some men, but a lot of these women that we see on the panels talk about the fluidity of their sex. By, by, and by the way, on that, I mean, I don't mean, wow, that could be totally misinterpreted what I just said. Ooh, what did I exactly mean? Double entendre. What I mean is that the fluidity with which they have sex with everyone and everything that walks, not good. Um, you know, this hyper promiscuity, this female promiscuity is empowerment, this, you know, sex in the city slash Kardashian-esque culture that we now embrace as, as young people in society. That's all bad. That's all bad. So that's leading people down this dark hole of degeneracy. Women knew full well what they were doing, and they only wanted to have their way the same way a toddler whines and throws a temper tantrum when they don't get their way. Don't ever believe that line of wanting equality is true. They can't even own up to the fact that they chose to live that life. But when they don't take accountability for anything, it's always something or someone else to blame. They drive men away, then wonder where they've gone. I'm sorry, where the good ones have gone. Female hyper users of Instagram are also, they're sadistic, Machiavellian, psychopathic, and narcissistic, and they optimized for, for short-term mating strategies. So they're promiscuous, and that's a marker for antisocial behavior. So antisocial people, broadly speaking, have more sexual partners. They start engaging in sex earlier. They're more callous in their utilization of themselves and others. Would you call that toxic femininity? Is there such oh, a thing the, as the, toxic absolutely. femininity? Absolutely. We know what toxic femininity is. It's, okay. it's the female version of antisocial behavior is reputation savaging. Yeah, gossip, innuendo, backbiting, and females are very, Females can be very good at that. Now, men can do that too, and they do, especially on social media. But it's definitely the case that social media enables female antisocial type behavior, clearly. Feminine pathology scales magnificently on social media. God only knows what the consequence of that's going to be. Because men are just supposed to overcome everything to the point that the women don't know why they are interested. There's just something about them. Willingly wanting to dissociate. Is it any wonder people ask what women want? They don't know. Okay. 
but let's play. Let's say he sticks around. Well now he's a creep that makes you feel unsafe. And why destroy a man's love? To love those who hate. Well played. You've played yourself, ladies. Lie in the beds you've made. Quit throwing a lifeline to people who refuse to be responsible and accountable. As long as stupid people are propped up and bailed out for their poor choices, they will not learn and stop the bad behavior. No. They will be emboldened to do more of the same and expect fat checks as a reward. The reason being is because the really emotionally connected woman who's super loyal and super loving, um, she can't be with a man who's super busy. She can't, she can't do it. She's too anxious. She misses him too much. She needs him home all the time. She needs predictability. She needs stability. She wants a home. She wants you to help her put the kids to bed at night. Whereas the woman that's like, yeah, you can go on business trips for a couple of months. Yeah, you know, I'll, I'll see you when I see you. Um, she tends to be a bit more emotionally detached. So what happens is that man ends up not having his emotional needs met at work. And sometimes they can be missed at home as well. It's always tears and regret after years of them believing they are empowered and independent and need no men in their lives. You hear a lot about women being fooled into bad life choices, like working, promiscuity, and failing marriages. Women leave, women divorce men 70 to 80 percent of the time. I, I would argue in relationships it's probably similar. Men aren't leaving, women are. So to a guy's point of view, he's going to commit to this girl. And what does he get? He doesn't get purity anymore, you know, these, these hoes. You know, he doesn't, he doesn't get youth anymore, so he doesn't get either of those things. A lot of times she already has a kid, so, so he, he's not fulfilling his mating strategy. On top of that, even if he does find a good woman that maybe has the qualities he's looking for, he, she was going to want him to marry her, right? And what does he get out of that? Oh, she can leave and take half and take my kids. Okay. And she's paid to take my kids away from me. She, she gets more money if she takes my children. Mm -hmm. And so from the men's point of view, they're just kind of like, F it, because like women aren't wives nowadays. I wonder at what point women have to consider stopping being fools. Women who want equality need to be aware of what they are asking for. To get the equality of men, they must be treated like men. To be treated like men, they must work alongside men in hard jobs, not office jobs. Since it's unlikely that women built their houses, or founded the businesses or government organizations that the majority of these women work for, there aren't actually any women going their way. Only in the middle to late 20th century did women have access to a lifestyle where women could be romantically involved with other women in public. I believe that as more and more men go their separate ways, accumulating their own riches and living their own lives, women will become more and more destitute or reliant on credit and the government to survive. Because it's a societal norm, Women frequently say one thing while really meaning another. They can't seem to approach anything in life directly, thus it's likely part of their biology as well. They aren't as literal as men are, but they are always attempting to enter our thoughts through our back doors. Because we have a variety of goals to pursue in the actual world, men cannot afford to be overly literal. Women who were more successful at influencing males throughout history pass on their genes to subsequent generations. Men used to experience less agony and suffering when they died in war, at least in the past. However, nowadays, a man who gets divorced and loses his house, children, wife, and sense of purpose is in a far worse situation than a man who dies on the battleground. Women simply want us to accept the bait and fight them in a staged game. Love is our battleground. Projecting vulnerability gives women power because it encourages men to step up, get engaged, and take care of them. However, as women showcase more and more authority, males will go their own way and seek out other motivations for living in addition to defending women. Why should we still be here if women don't require our protection? Women want men to remain by their side, take care of them, and listen to their issues, but they also want men to believe that they are not dependent on them. With the promise of freedom from males, feminism has devastated the majority of Western women. Women need males more than they realize because they are unhappy at work and are turning into crazy lonesome cat ladies, but they won't confess it as long as it is taboo to do so. In the future decades, as our culture gets more conservative, they will eventually come to recognize it. Then, rather than saying they need males because it's true, women will claim they do because it's fashionable to do so. This is why I feel that modern feminism has lied to women in general. Modern feminism has robbed women of their meaning and purpose, and given them a new purpose that is only making women more and more miserable. 
You only have to go and see the women around your society or online today to know what I mean. Women are miserable because of feminism. Women can only attempt to forge their own paths once all of the labor has been completed for them, and all of the resources are in their possession. They don't like MGTOW since the labor and resources are still controlled by men, which is understandable. They criticize men for going their own way because it prohibits them from having control over the resources. Again, women are hesitant to speak it out loud, since doing so would reveal their inability and demonstrate that they depend on men far more than they realize. Women like other women would vanish overnight if women weren't permitted to work in the workforce as they were in the 20th century because they would all be looking for husbands to support them. Instead of their intimacy, they would be more concerned with how much money they were spending on their lifestyle. They wouldn't be thinking about being physical at all. When ladies scream out for males to assist them, a lot of men will genuinely respond and come to their aid, restoring the supposedly traditional connection. Once they appeal to men to assist them, neo-traditionalism will make a comeback. Then, it's likely that many men will respond to their appeals and come to assist them. In exchange, they'll receive conventional relationships and a new variety of neo-traditionalism will manifest itself. Women will suddenly claim to care about males in this scenario, thereby forcing men back to the negotiating table. Because the men's rights movement aims to reunite men and women in a conventional relationship, there are numerous traditions within it. That is likely another reason why the women's rights movement despises men's movement. It not only educates men about the nature of women, but also informs them that they have no chance of victory. Because they are mostly married and serving as white knights for the women in their lives, males in the men's rights movement sometimes struggle to adequately protect men. Their attention is first dispersed and not concentrated in one spot. But with Megtau, we speak the truth and are not frightened of what others may say even if they are liberal lunatics. Because we won't fit neatly into the gynocentrism box that males are meant to fit in, feminists despise us. You may either choose to be a conservative man or a man who acts like a feminist. Feminists only want to give males those two options since women benefit regardless of what they choose. Thanks for watching The Circle of Kings. As always, we're looking forward to your support. So please hit the like button, share this video with your friends, and subscribe to the channel to stay updated with everything all kings like yourself need to know.